1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, look at verse number 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse number 17. It says, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today we're going to begin this new series entitled At the Cross. Amen. At the Cross. At the Cross. Where I first saw the light. Amen. Now, now, many times, many times what happens is people only associate with the cross death, agony, and pain. Amen. And all that happened at the cross. But what I want to focus on is the victory at the cross. Yeah, yeah, that was death. That was pain. That was agony at the cross. But there also was victory. Amen. And that is that is what my focus will be on the next few weeks. What happened at the cross? Amen. And how does that affect my life? Amen. Amen. Now, now the Bible says that the preaching of the cross is the dynamite of God. It's the power of God. Amen. To those of us who believe. Amen. Go to Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. Amen. Romans chapter number one. It's the power of God. It's the dynamite of God. Amen. It's able to make things happen in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. Look at verse number 16. Romans Chapter number one. Look what he says here. <clears throat> for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is what? The power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Amplified says it this way. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Christ. For it is, the, it is God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and a confident surrender and firm reliance to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. So this gospel of the cross, the Bible say it's, it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. This is how we're going to get saved. Amen. Based upon the cross. Amen. Somebody say at the cross. Amen. Now, 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 here's what the Bible says back in 1 Corinthians, that the cross destroys the wisdom of men and makes foolish the wisdom of the world. See, the world would not be able to comprehend what happened at the cross. They just thought it was another crucifixion. But the cross for us, the Bible says it is. It is that power. Amen. It is the power of God. Amen. Amen. It will destroy men's wisdom. It will destroy the, the world's wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. But it will save those of us who can't believe. How can a man dying on the cross save a world? Amen. If we could just believe that Jesus went to the cross to pay a price that we could not pay. Hallelujah. He said you can't be saved. Amen. Amen. Now, now watch this now. Anybody who's searching for God's love. You can find it at the cross. See, 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 I'm going to talk in just a few moments. I'm going to talk a few, in a few moments about how we can really see how much God loved us. Amen. See, see, people are walking around trying to find love. I'm telling you, you're looking for it. It ain't going to be in the club. Amen. You ain't going to find love like God can love you in the club. Amen. See, see, when we look at the cross, I can see, I can see how much God loved me. Because he gave his best gift, amen? 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Go to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Because not only does it answer the question of whether God loves me or not, but the cross proves that God's way is better than man's way. <laughs> Amen. It proves that his way is not like our way. Amen. Because Listen, listen, listen. Let me ask you all this question. Those of you who are parents, how many of you would give up your child to die for a world that wouldn't appreciate it? Amen. But God's way is different than our way. He says, I'm going to give you my best, my best, my prized possession to, to be the substitute. Amen. For you and you and you. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 55. Look at verse number eight. Isaiah 55. Verse number eight. Watch this now. Look what he says here. Isaiah 55 verse eight says this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So God says, the cross will prove that my way is better than your way. See, see, because the religious mind will think that going to church will satisfy the sin debt. Amen. And, and that's why people have church every day thinking that that's going to suffice for the sacrifice that Jesus already paid for us. But God's way is that if you didn't go to church, but if you accepted what Jesus did on the cross, you could be saved. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Now, and lastly, lastly, if you really want to know what life is all about and what truth is all about, all we got to do is just look at the cross. Amen. That, that's what life is all about, the cross. Amen. Amen. Now, go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. See, Adam messed it up for all of us. Amen. The Bible talks about one man's sins, one man's offense caused all of the, the generations to be thrown into calamity. But then by one man's obedience, Jesus what man was reconciled or brought back to God by one man. One man only. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, but one man only. His name is Jesus, amen? <laughs> amen. First Peter chapter number three. First Peter chapter number three. So I see reconciliation. I see man being restored based upon the cross, amen? Watch this now. First Peter Chapter number three, look at verse number 18. First Peter chapter three, verse number 18. It says, for Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. So he says, listen, Jesus, the just, died for the unjust, all of us. Amen. And he says, look, he took our sin. Oh, I'm going to have to show you all that. And he substituted our sins for his righteousness. He met, I like to call it the great exchange. Amen. The exchange that we didn't deserve. But because of the cross, because of the love of God, amen, Jesus said, I'm going to make that exchange. I'm going to give you my righteousness. And I'm going to take your sins, all your mess, and I'm going to go to the cross with it. <laughs> at the cross. Somebody say at the cross. At the cross. Okay, go to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Chapter 5. Let me show you that. Let me show you the great, the great exchange, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Look at verse number 18. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Let's begin at verse number 18. Look what he says here. And all things are of God who had reconciled or brought back 
us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. In other words, you should you should have to pay the price. There is a penalty for the sin that we were living in. Amen. But he said, I'm not going to put that on you. Amen. I'm not going to put that on you because what my son did. And he says, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, because we are in him, watch this now, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead to be reconciled to God. For he had made him, Jesus, to be sin for us. He didn't know no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Somebody say the great exchange. Okay, okay. <laughs> when God looked out and seen the mess we were in, the penalty for our sin was death. But what he, he decided to do, Sister Washington, was to make an exchange because he loved us so much. He says, look, I'm going to send the sinless one to die for every sinner that will come on this earth. And he said, look, I'm going to give you my righteousness and I'm going to take your sin. And that's why you shouldn't live in condemnation because of what Jesus already did. See, the devil tried to remind you of stuff that's already paid for. Okay, 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 okay. Let, let, let's just say this. Let's just say this, Sean. Let's just say this. That I find out what all your bills are, and then I go down and pay all your bills. Okay? I pay them all. But you don't know I wouldn't pay them all. Okay? And then when you get to your, the place that, that you thought you owed money, and you went trying to pay, they say, oh, no, that, that's been paid for. That, 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 that's been paid for. Now, here's what most folk do. No, no, that can't be right. No, 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 no. I, look, I didn't pay nothing. I want to pay my bill. No, no, baby, it's been paid in full. Instead of you putting your checkbook up and walking out rejoicing, you want to fuss with folk. What is that? Let me get what a supervisor at. And the receipt that we have from God that has been paid for is right here in the Word. Woo, Jesus, amen. Amen. But he exchanged, the great exchange, the great exchange. Somebody say the great exchange. The great exchange. Now go over to Ephesians chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter number 2. Because I'm trying to get you that there is no other message than the cross that restores men into right relationship with God. Amen. Thank God for the cross. Amen. That he would look upon man and count us worthy to be saved. We were worthy to be saved. <laughs> Ephesians chapter number two. Look at verse number 14. Ephesians chapter two. Verse number 14. Look what he says here. For he is our peace, who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Okay, 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 okay. Stop right there. The Bible says that it was our iniquity and sin that separated us. So that was this wall between God on this side and man on that side. That wall was sin. But the Bible says that Jesus, he came and took down the middle wall that was separating us from God. Amen. Now, 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 in some, in some denominations, they still think that wall exists. And they're trying to get some other mediator to go between God and them. Amen. And Jesus said, look, 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 he got to come to me just like y'all got to come to me. But I've torn the wall down. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that the veil was ripped from the top to the bottom. We couldn't reach it. But Jesus said, I'm going to tear it from up there down there. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Verse, verse 1, verse 15. Verse 15. Watch this. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So it says, it was the cross, amen, that reconciled us back to God. Okay, Hebrews, Hebrews, no, no, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1. Anybody getting this today? Because it was at the cross, amen? Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse number 19, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 19. Amen, amen, amen. Look at verse 19, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. The reconciliation happened because of the cross, amen. The restoration of man back to God happened at the cross. Amen, 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 amen. So, 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 so the preaching is the, the power of God. The preaching of the cross is the dynamite of God. Amen. There's no other message that can reconcile God, man back to God, but by the cross. Amen. Now watch this now. Then, then watch this. The cross demonstrates the majesty and the victory that Jesus obtained at the cross. See, Jesus was not the victim. <laughs> he was not the victim. No, no. The cross demonstrates that Jesus is the victor. <laughs> amen, amen. See, see, there were two victories at the cross. One was Jesus' victory, but the other was our victory, amen. <laughs> Okay, okay, go to 1 John, 1 John, 1 John. Amen. When I look at the cross, I see this is where the victory began. Amen. The victory for mankind. And, 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 and what I'm about to show you is Jesus didn't do it hiding. Amen. Jesus said, I'm going to make a public spectacle of the devil. <laughs> I'm gonna, look, look, if... I'm going to show you. I'm gonna show, look, I, I got so much to show you. If the devil would have really understood what the cross meant, the devil would have left Jesus alone. Okay, I'm going to show y'all that first. Uh, y'all hold y'all place. Y'all hold y'all place right there. Hold y'all place in 1 John. Go to, uh, go, to, uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Yeah, yeah. If the devil would have known. He wouldn't have never said. He, look, he thought he had Jesus. I got him. I got him. We're going to crucify him. Like, like that wasn't in the plan of God. Amen. He said, look, I got to send Jesus to die. Amen. The sinless one. To take away the sins of the world. He has to be a lamb. Amen. The lamb of God. He has to be that. He has to. He can't go with it and, and, and fight him. He had to go with his mouth shut. If the devil would have known that Jesus' silence was causing us to have the victory, he would love Jesus alone. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2. Watch this, watch this. Y'all, somebody better shout on this. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man, when I when I when I when I seen this, I'm like, oh my God. The devil thought he had Jesus. But had he read the scripture and known what the scripture said. He wouldn't have messed with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now look what verse 7 says. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which known, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. In other words, if they would have had this wisdom from God. They wouldn't have messed with Jesus. Amen. But, but, but watch this now. But thank God they didn't have that wisdom. 
Because if they did have that wisdom and didn't mess with Jesus, we'd be in a bad situation. Okay, okay, go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Watch this, watch this. 1 John chapter 3. We got the victory, y'all. We got the victory. Amen. We got the victory. And whatever the devil tries to torment, torment you with, we got the victory over that. Amen. Yes, we do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Verse 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy what? See, see, when Jesus went to the cross, and y'all, y- y- how many of y'all read, read in the, one of the last seven sayings of Jesus when he says, it is finished? Amen? Jesus was saying, what the devil meant for bad, every time the devil tried to raise up his head, look, look, I have already destroyed his works against you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Go to Colossians. Colossians. Colossians chapter number two. Colossians chapter number two. Watch this now. Colossians chapter number two. Look at verse number 15. Jesus, did you do it? Did you do it in the closet when nobody could see you? Did you do it behind the screen? Amen. When nobody would ever see the evidence of it? How did you do it? How did you get the victory, Jesus? How, can, can, could anybody see it? Verse 15. Verse, well, let's go back. Let's, let's, who, Jesus? Let's go back to verse 14. Look what he says. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way what he did. Okay, let me just can I take a sidetrack real quick. You know, the, the, the Roman uh, judicial system was that if a person was found guilty of a crime, they would take a legal note and write on it what they were convicted of and go nail that to the person's house. So if you were a thief and you were convicted of thievery, they would write out a letter and go nail it on your house. So every time somebody passed, they seen that you was a thief. Oh my goodness. If you were a murderer, they would write the ordinance against you. Make it a public spectacle of you and go nail it on your house. But well, watch this. Every sentence that was against us, every warrant that was against us, every conviction that was against us, Jesus says, instead of nailing it on your house, instead of nailing it on your house, I'm going to take it and I'm going to go nail it on the cross. So you no longer have that sentence on you. I took it for you. Amen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. 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 Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. See, the reason why some people in church shout louder than others, because they had more on their record (laughs) than others. (laughs) See, 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 I know what I used to do. And I know the penalty that I would pay if I was convicted of it. Jesus said, look, look, all that stuff you done. Uh, Look, I was, uh, I was, I was uh, just, uh, just the other day. I had the opportunity to go and, and talk to uh, some young at-risk boys in the seventh and eighth grade. And uh, I began to tell them about what I did when I was their age. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I told them how, I told them how, instead of breaking out of schools, I was breaking into schools. Just to, just to you know, vandalize the place. I, I told him, I told him how I was a thief. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And how I used to steal bicycles. If you left your bicycle out, I took it. I repainted it, put some new spokes on it. Amen. Put some new wheels on it. Put the little flags on the, on the handlebars and sold it to somebody else. Amen. 
So, so, so I, I began to share with them my past. But I said, that was a day that I had to make a decision. I had to make a choice. Am I going to live my life like this and suffer the consequences or am I going to choose better? Amen. Watch this now. Watch this now. The choice that I made, amen, was that I would accept Jesus and allow him to be the Lord of my life. Oh, my goodness. That changed everything for me. Amen. But, but he, he blotted out my stuff. Amen. That, that's what I used to be. That, that, that's not who I am right now. That's what I, I used to be. Amen. Amen. So, 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 I, look, when the devil tried to remind me of, of your you remember when? Uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't remember that. I'm a new creature. Amen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, weren't you the one? No, that wasn't me. God has changed my name. <laughs> oh, Jesus, amen. He has changed my name. But, but that's not what I want to get to. That's, that, 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 I wasn't trying to get there. I'm trying to get to verse 15. He said, he and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Listen how the Amplified puts it. God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us and made a bold display and a public example of them in triumphing over them in him and in it the cross. So he says he didn't do it, he didn't do it in private. That's what I want to show y'all. That while he was on that cross, it was in a public form. Amen. So that everybody could see. Amen. As a matter of fact, they say, Jesus, if you're really who you say you are, get yourself down off that cross. They were mocking him. Try, trying, to, trying to put him down. Yeah, you say you're the son of God. You say you got all power. If you're so powerful, Jesus, get yourself down. And one thief on the cross said, hey, man, hey, y'all better shut up. This man is the real deal. We belong up here, but he don't. <laughs> he said, Jesus, remember when, when you get to your, get to paradise. He said, this day, this day. Mm -hmm. But he did it openly. Somebody say openly. openly. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Watch this now. Hebrews chapter number 2. Look at verse number 14. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse number 14. Look what it says. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power, that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. In other words, Jesus said, look, the devil tries to hold death over us. But what Jesus did on the cross took that fear away. Paul says it this way. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Listen, look, look, I want to be here, but if, look, if I got to go, I ain't, I ain't going to be in fear. That's why, that's why as believers, we shouldn't be afraid of dying. Amen. Now, 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 listen to me now. I believe we ought to live 120 years. I don't want to give up none of them years. But if, if I were to die, I know I got a better place. Amen. A building not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. <laughs> Amen. So, so, so we shouldn't be afraid to die. Amen. See, if your account have been settled, <laughs> if it's been settled, Hey, man, look, old preacher, you said this way. Death is just the shortcut to home. Okay, okay. Y'all remember growing up, y'all remember growing up, people used to have these little trails in people's yards. You know, instead of going all the way around the corner, they just cut through somebody's yard. And then they had a little trail. Because everybody been through that. Well, see, they got some saints that has already gone home to be with the Lord. They done put a trail somewhere. Amen. So, 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 look, if I had to go right now, I'd just go through the trail. 
Amen. Because it's just a shortcut to home. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Amen. 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 The cross. Somebody say the cross. At the cross. Okay. 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 So, 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 so I see, I see my victory. Amen. I see my victory. I see my victory. Amen. At the cross. I see Jesus' victory at the cross. But I see my victory at the cross. Amen. That the devil can no longer hold over my head my past mistakes, my past iniquities, my past sins. Why? Because it's been nailed at the cross. Amen. Every sin that I've ever committed is at the cross. Even if I mess up now, it's at the cross. He's nailed it at the cross. Now, that doesn't give me license to sin. See, people want to take that and say, give me, well, well, that's a license. I go do whatever I want. No, no, no. If you really love God like you say, you do. Amen. You're not going to want to hurt the heart of God. Amen. Amen. Go to John chapter number 10. John chapter 10. Because there's no other message that gives man the perfect assurance of God's love on a daily basis. Hallelujah. This message at the cross. It demonstrates how much God loves you. Amen. If your mama told you she don't love you, if your daddy told you he doesn't love you, God demonstrates to you based upon the cross how much he loves you. Amen. John chapter 10. Look at verse number 10. John chapter 10. Verse number 10. John chapter 10. <laughs> verse number 10. Look what he says here. The thief coming not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf cometh and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth them. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life. What? Oh, look at look at love. Look at love. He say he say he say he say if you if if, if you don't have if you just a hireling, when the enemy comes you're gonna run. But because he's the good shepherd, Jesus says, look, I'm willing to lay. He say I'm gonna lay my life down for you. Think, think about this for a second. When you think about you, and you think about what you've done, stop, okay, stop, stop, stop looking at nobody else. Everybody close your eyes, close your eyes. Think of all the stuff you've done. Woo, wasn't that a horrible pic picture? That was a horror story, huh? You, I mean, I gave you a few seconds of just looking at what your past looked like. That thing ought to scare you. And Jesus says, I didn't wait for you to get all that stuff right. I love you in spite of you. In spite of your past. He said, I love, look, I'm willing to lay down my life for you. Because I'm the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd because I love you so much. Amen. And that is the nature of God. Amen. That's the nature of God is to love us. The cross demonstrates that while I was yet in my sins, he died for us and gave himself for us. Not when I decided to get it right. While I was still doing my dirt, he loved me enough to allow Jesus to go to the cross, to demonstrate to mankind that I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because I love you in spite of you. <laughs> go, to, go to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. Amen. Hallelujah. It was at the cross that God demonstrates his love toward me. And covers Every one of my sin. Proverbs chapter 10. Watch this. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 10. 
Look at verse number 12. Hatred stirreth up strife. But love covered how much sin? Okay, okay, watch this now. Y'all remember, y'all remember when Pharaoh decides that he wasn't going to let God's people go. God began to send the plagues to help change his mind. And one of the plagues was God says, I'm going to come and I'm going to destroy every firstborn. But I'm going to give my people a way out of that thing. He says, Moses, tell my people to put the blood over the doorposts and over the lentils. And when I come through, anybody that's in the house is going to be covered. Amen. And when I see the blood, I'm just going to pass over. If God gave the children of Israel and made them that type of commitment, didn't God do that for us? Okay, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. First, I'm show, I got to show you, I got to show you, I got to show you. I just can't tell you, I got to show you. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says that, that love covereth all sin. And the blood cover the children of Israel that when death came it passed them over and nobody that was in the house was ever harmed all right watch this now first Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 7 purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a, a new lump as ye are unleavened for even Christ our what? Passover. Our Passover is sacrificed for us. So look what he's saying to us right now. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross, Jesus became our Passover. Oh my goodness. And the Bible declares that right now that he is making intercessions for us right now. In other words, every time the devil tries to bring up your past, bring up your mistakes, Jesus is there saying, hey, 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 I cover that one. Yeah, I, I, I cover that one. <laughs> Revelation talks about, Revelation talks about how the enemy is going back and forth. And he is the accuser of the brethren. He is pimping you out. Amen. He is pimping you out before God. Every time you've done something wrong, every time you even have a wrong thought, the devil is like, hey, 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 God, did you see? Did you see him do that? Did you see her? Did you see her attitude she just had? And Jesus says, uh, uh, daddy, daddy, that was covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I know it, it looks like a bad act, but it was covered. <laughs> oh, Jesus, that thing was covered. It was covered. I mean, every mistake you ever made. Jesus says, I'm your Passover. If you accept me, I'm your Passover. If you look, 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 you don't have to remember all your sins. All you have to do is just accept me, and I'm your Passover. <laughs> That's love. Uh-huh, that's love. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, my God. Huh. Okay. So, not only did Jesus give us the right to be passed over, but at the cross, at the cross, he gave us the right to become something. See, see, we was something, 
But at the cross, he gave us the right to become something. It wasn't that we were already that. But if we accept what's at the cross, we become something. Well, Pastor Shaw, what do we become? Go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Amen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Look at verse number 4. Watch this now. Look at what the cross stands for. Us. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. See, see. What, 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 what people limit, limit the cross to is just the pain, the agony. Amen. That's all they limited to. Amen. And yes, that did happen at the cross. But also at the cross, God gives each and every one of us the opportunity to become the sons and daughters of God. Amen. I'll be come. Go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Look at verse number 12. John chapter 1. Verse number 12. Watch this now. John chapter 1. Verse number 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to what? To become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. If I receive him, if I receive what happened at Calvary, amen, if I, I, I look at the cross, that, that it was more than just the pain. It was more than just the agony. But no, no, it was an opportunity for me to become, to become the son of God. For those ladies to become the daughters of God. Okay, now watch this now. If I am a son and you are a daughter. Okay, okay, okay. Watch this. You become an heir. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, any, anybody in here, any, anybody in here was adopted as a, as a kid? Anybody? Anybody ever was adopted? Huh? No, no, in a, in a natural sense, in a natural sense. No adoption, okay. Anybody ever adopted somebody? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, sis Pew. All right, all right, all right. Let's see how I put this. When a person gets adopted, the person adopting you had to look at you and determine whether they wanted you. <laughs> there are some children who are on the adoption list from, I'm, I'm just trying to make this plain to you when the people who are looking to adopt they look at them and say no that's not what I want I want this that or the other yeah, yeah the age the gender whether they got good hair bad hair cause I gotta comb that stuff <laughs> but, but watch it now they looked upon them to determine whether they were qualified to be adopted into their family okay when God 
looked at us. In the muck and the mire. With the smell of sin on us. He didn't overlook us just because of the condition we were in. He says, I'll take them all. Amen. I want all of them to become a part of my family. No matter how they look. Good hair, bad hair. I'll take them. Amen. And then he says, watch this now. Then he says, not only will I adopt you into my family, but I'm going to give you my name. The name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm going to give you my name. To be able to use it and use it as the power of attorney. All you got to do is just say, Jesus. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. That, 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 that's not all. Go to Romans chapter 8. Let me see if I close with this right here. Because it was at the cross. Somebody say at the cross. It's it not only a place of pain. It's not only a place of agony. It's not only a place of death. But it's a place of victory, amen? Amen? It's a place where I become something. Romans chapter 8. Look at verse number 14. Romans chapter 8. Verse number 14. Watch this now. Romans chapter 8, verse number 14. Look, look, look what he says here. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Look what, what he says. If we are, except Jesus, we become the children of God. And if children, then heirs of God. And join heirs with Christ. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, okay, I'm an heir. All right. So that means whatever daddy got is mine. Amen. Whatever, if, if, if daddy got it, because I'm an heir. Amen. Because my name been changed. It's mine. And, and daddy say I can have it all. Okay. But then he links up that not only am I an heir, but I'm a joint heir. So whatever Jesus had, I got it too. So if Jesus had the power, amen, to stop demonic forces, I'm going to join out of that thing. Amen. So when the devil tries to oppress me, guess what? Oh, no, no, no. I got power now. I'm going to join out. Amen. I'm going to join out. Amen. I'm going to join out. Jesus got the power to raise those who are sick. I'm a joint heir. Amen. I'm a joint heir of that thing. That's, that's part of our package. If Jesus, if Jesus, watch this now, can feed a multitude, I'm a joint heir. I'm a joint heir of that power. Oh, Jesus, amen. And then some of y'all see this, like, well, that, that Jesus, that just Jesus. Oh, no, 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 no. Because it was at the cross. When I get, when I get knowledge, or what really transpired at the cross? Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to set y'all off next time, next week. Because we all start looking at what, what really happened at the cross. His hands and his feet and his head and all that stuff. What, hap what, what, what that mean to us? Because, see, that's some power in, in knowledge. And when I get knowledge of what really transpired, oh, it changes who I am, amen? I walk with a different confidence. Amen. Because I'm a child of the most high God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, Lord Jesus. I got the victory, amen. Yeah, yeah, even through the pain, even through the agony, 
even through the death at the cross. It made us victorious. Yeah, it made us victorious. I'm a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm new. I'm new. I'm new. Yeah, yeah. When he stood there. Okay, okay. Watch this. Watch. Check Jesus out. It would have been something if they would have just laid him on the ground and left him there. But they made the critical mistake of lifting him. They didn't realize that he said, but if I, if I be lifted up, I'm going to be a magnetic force. I'm going to draw <laughs> to the old ray of cross. I'm going to draw me. I'm going to draw me into myself. And today, he's still drawing. Yes, today, he is still drawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, today, he's still drawing. He, he still has his arms wide open, wanting all men to come. All men to come. Amen. Don't, don't miss out on the next couple of weeks. I'm telling you, the next couple of weeks, we're going to break this thing down where you can see what really happened at the cross and how it benefited you. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a benefit to you and to me. So, I, 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 look, I just need to find, Pastor, just show me, just show me, just show me, just show me what happened. Just show me what happened at the cross. And, man, when you, when you see what happened at the cross, you're going to thank God every day now. Yeah, yeah, if you were bashful about thanking God for what really happened, amen, when you see it for yourself, amen, oh, Lord Jesus, you're going to appreciate what God did, amen. And I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise, Amen.